What's going on YouTube? It's Mike here and today guys we're going to be going over the iOS 5 hidden features. I basically rounded up a bunch of hidden features I've seen in iOS 5 and I'm going to be showing you today all of them. Now the first one is split keyboard or at least this is the one I feel is a hidden feature. Most of you may know it. This is only an iPad feature but there is a few um, as you can see here I'm holding down the keyboard button. There are a few extra features like dock and split and dock and merge when you actually hold down the button and you can move it up and down so I think that's pretty useful that split keyboard next up is multitasking gestures and this can be activated in the settings by going to general and then you're gonna turn multitasking gestures on Now, basically after you turn it on you use four or five fingers to swipe up the multitasking bar swipe down the multitasking bar navigate between apps as shown or even pinch to the home screen that's my favorite I find myself using these gestures very, very often, and they're very, very useful to me as well. Next up is a really cool one, and this is in the camera. It's called Grid. What this allows you to do is basically be able to get a easier picture of what you actually want and how you want the picture centered. It'll hopefully align it better for you and give you a preference as to how the picture is going to look. And then, of course, there's a volume up camera button, which now you just don't have to use the camera. I can't see myself using this on the iPad, but there is also scroll to pictures. I guess it's pretty cool. And then here we just got the simple grid again. The next feature is notification center alert. So say here I'm drumming on my iPad and uh, I accidentally make a slide with my finger, as shown here. You see that little piece of notification center come up and it doesn't interrupt my game. If I want notification center to come down, I have to pull on it twice. Next is deleting apps while downloading. Say I go into the App Store here and I download Adobe Photoshop Reader. What I can do is while it's downloading, I can hold the icon down and delete it while it's downloading if I don't want it or don't want it to download. Next is Inbox Swipe. Now this can only be done on the iPad, but basically you swipe once with your left or right finger to pull up your inbox. Next is Assistive Touch. This can be activated in the settings, going to General and Accessibility, and right there we've got Assistive Touch. Go ahead and turn it on and you'll see this little black icon with a circle appear in the right corner. Mine didn't appear there, but basically I can move this little guy around and it's basically, aside from Siri, your assistant. Obviously Siri is not on the iPad, but it allows you to not just use Apple's hardware buttons on the device, but you can also use integrated software buttons in case you can't use the buttons if something broke. This is going to be really useful and those of you who are disabled and can't press buttons this is going to be really useful I don't find myself using it a lot because I like using the hardware switches but I don't know it could be useful to some of you so I definitely recommend you do try it out if you don't want to use the hardware buttons or again if they're broken or disabled next is private safari browsing or if you want the UI of safari to be black I know most of you are wondering how to do this but once you turn on the feature your UI turns black and you're private from browsing the next and last feature, which is my favorite, is the Apple TV iPad 2 mirroring. You can also do this with the iPhone 4S. Basically, here we've got my iPad. And in multitasking, I connect to my Apple TV, and I get this new mirroring feature. And once I hit on, it goes right over to my Apple TV without using that $40 adapter. Over Wi-Fi, there is a little bit of lag, but I couldn't blame it because it is over Wi-Fi. And once you turn it on, you'll get the little blue bar at the top of your iPad to let you know that you're connected over AirPlay. As you can see here, we had camera running. Multitasking works pretty great. Again, there is a little bit of a lag, but it's not much of a big deal. We'll go ahead and open Angry Birds Rio here. And I have Angry Birds Rio in HD. I have the iPad version. This is really awesome because the graphics are beautiful in Angry Birds to begin with. And now I can basically play Angry Birds on my Apple TV via my iPad. And even the game volume goes straight to the Apple TV instead of my iPad so I can hear all the audio through there and get the full TV experience without ever looking at my iPad. So we'll go ahead and demonstrate here uh, iPad to TV. As you can see, there is a very, very small lag. Not that big of a deal. It is a little bit delayed. Not lag, delayed. But um, it still works out. And again, I couldn't blame it because it is over Wi-Fi. So it does work really awesome. I tried out my iPhone 4S with this and that works good too. I'm able to use Siri with it, I'm able to bring audio to it, video, it works out really awesome and to just have it happen on your iPad, it works out really well and it's simple, you could read emails, 
watch movies, and so on. Go ahead and lock my lock screen, and that's basically it. And thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please leave some comments below on your thoughts. Of course, give this video a thumbs up, rate, and click the subscribe button up top. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.